everyone. It is Monday. That means it's time for one of my regularly scheduled draft videos. I do one every Monday and Thursday on a minimum. Lately, been doing a few more than that, but you can always count on them on Monday and Thursday. We're drafting more rivals of Ixalan. Well, <laughs> in my last draft video, I got the Immortal Sun. Uh, and uh, with one time I played it, it took over the game. And it, I think it's great. I think it's one of the biggest bombs in the entire format. So I think we're going to take it. But this is a pretty stacked pack. Uh, Needle Tooth Raptor and Thrashing Brontodon are both cards I have first picked and not felt bad about. and Well, felt good about even. And then Jungle Born Pioneer, Moment of Craving, Squire's Devotion are all cards you first pick sometimes as well. But we're going to take another, the Immortal Sun. And hopefully we'll do a little bit better with it this time. Um... We had it in a black green deck last time that was pretty, you know, it seemed like a pretty good control deck. It was grindy, but uh, we did 0-2 with it, so it can't have been that good, right? So, but the Immortal Sun, the one time we played it, was just sort of like, good game. So, Commander's Awakening with the Immortal Sun is kind of funny because, uh, you know, it'll draw us even more cards. And it may just be what I take here, because this pack is not exactly powerful. Did I Rig Hauler, Firebrand, these things are fine, but... I think I'll take an Awakening. Let's draw some cards. Um, okay, well, I do like Silvergill Adept. Um, if you're in Merfolk and we can make Merfolk work, it's a good place to go. Uh, Hardy Veteran is a two-drop that's bit good in more decks, but um, the rest of this pack isn't so good. So I'm going to take the Adept here. Path of Discovery. It's one of my favorite cards, and I have a hard time saying no to it. Even though there's a Jungleborn Pioneer and a Gilgrove Stalker here, uh, we're going to take Path of Discovery all day. Uh, we have three sweet rares um, that do all sorts of card draw, so that's fun. Um, we do probably want to try to take Merfolk when we can. Uh, we have Gilgrove Stalker. I think it's better, a little better than Crashing Tide. Fortnite of the Empire is very good, but I think we're trying to be blue-green here. Grab ourselves another two-drop merfolk. Okay, we got a jungle-born pioneer here. I think it's better than Miss Cloaked Herald, who's also pretty good in this deck, but the pioneer is great. Uh, River Darter is something we'll play if we have to, if we're really hurting for merfolk. Right now, our only payoff for them is the Adept, but uh, we'll probably pick up more. Jungleborn Pioneer combos really well with the Immortal Sun and Path of Discovery as well, incidentally. And Kumena's Awakening because it can help us reach um, ascending, Ascend. So we're going to Jungleborn Pioneer again. The Woodland Stream would be nice, but we definitely take the Pioneer. We could have three of them. Um, this drafts off to a very exciting start, I think. <laughs> I haven't played with Kumena's Awakening yet. Um, you know, it does help your opponent draw cards too in the early game. But it also helps you ascend quickly because you're drawing more permanents. So usually, you know, if things are going okay, you can probably make it so they only get one or two cards out of it before you ascend and it becomes one-sided. Um, and obviously this is one-sided and so is this. So Okay, uh, Jade Bearer is okay. Not excellent. But given the, the rest of this pack, I do think it's what we take. Plummet's a good sideboard card, but we'll play a Jade Bearer. It works especially well on creatures that are difficult to block already. Hello, Jungleborn Pioneer came back. Yes, Merfolk are open. What we really want is a Miscloaked Herald or something like that um, to really put it over the edge. Okay, now we'll take a Negate for the sideboard. Sometimes people mainboard them. Uh, I tend to not to. I, I, I main board them. I bring them in against opponents with lots of removal. Um, okay, so we have three merfolk here. This one's not very good. This one I think is the best of the group, but it's also a four drop. But I think we take it. It is the best of the group. It helps push through more damage. River Darter's fine, but it's it's not great. So blue hasn't actually seemed that open. So... I mean, we did just have an option of a couple blue merfolk, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see where things take us. We'd prefer to be a merfolk deck, but we could turn into a lot of things. Like if we can't play Kumena's Awakening or Silver Gill Adept, it's not the end of the world. Okay, I think Aquatic Incursion is fine. It's not great. It gets better if we have the merfolk lord. But we do have the Immortal Sun, which is another Anthem effect. So 
that pumps our whole team. Also works pretty well with Path and Kumena's Awakening. And we'll take a really late River Darter. Okay, we want Merfolk payoffs. Oh my god. <laughs> well, so much for the Merfolk plan. It's hard to pass Tetsamok. Um, I could easily see us becoming a black green deck or something like that here now. If we take Tetsamok, it's the best card in the entire set. Uh, and we're sure we have some blue stuff going on, but we're not completely locked into the idea of playing blue. Um, and Tetsamok is a good reason not to be. Um, yeah, I mean, Jungleborn Pioneer might wheel. That'd be great for us because it's, again, good with Immortal Sun and Path of Discovery. Uh, Impale's nice, but Tetsamok it is. Bomb City. Okay, so one path we could try to take, which is a little bit risky, is taking Sailors of Means and other cards and finding a way to splash double black into our deck. So what, we were be, what we're giving up here if we do that is basically Moment of Craving. The problem is splashing double black doesn't work so well for Tetsumok, with Treasure anyway, because he has an activated ability. So I think we take Moment of Craving here. Champion of Dusk. Man. <laughs> There's also a Swift Warden and a Jungleborn Pioneer in this pack and a Kite Sail Corsair. Um, but Champion of Dusk is good even when it just draws you one card. So I think we take it over these two good merfolk. Maybe one of them wheels. Maybe the Kite Sail Corsair wheels. Ooh, Jungle Creeper. Uh, here's the Vampire Lord. But yeah, we take, we take Jungle Creeper here now that we seem to be locking in on Black Green. Okay, so Jade Bearer, we're probably not going to want as much because we're not going to have as many Merfolk as we would have had. Um, Curious Obsession is great, so if we ended up in the Merfolk deck, but we've picked up two powerful rares uh, in, in black, so I think we just take Oathsworn Vampire here. We only have two ways. To, uh, two ways? Do we have any way? Yeah, we have one way to gain life right now. We may pick up more, but... Man, Merfolk Mistbinder... I have some hard decisions to make in my life. <laughs> oh. I mean, we're not taking an Armasaur or a Revenant, so I think we take the Mistbinder and and think about trying to being Merfolk again. Um Yeah. <laughs> The cards in that pack weren't good anyway, otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it, but I think that's what we want to do there. So four under the coalition isn't so good if you've only got um like a handful of pirates, which is probably where we're gonna end up. Uh Gleaming Barrier is a nice card to help us get to our late game, which is what we want to be doing. Colossal Dreadmaw is nice, but we have two sixes already. I think we just take the barrier. Barrier has ended up being like a way better card than I think anybody expected because of its ability to help control decks get to the late game. It helps you fix too. We could potentially splash Merfolk Mistbinder if we end up, I mean, it is the kind of card you usually want to play in turn two, but if we end up with enough treasure, we could think about splashing her. Can't splash Command as Awakening very effectively. Jadecraft Artisan's good too, so we could take it instead of the Leaming Barrier here, and I think we probably do. Okay, well now I wish I'd taken the Gleaming Barrier because I don't really want a third one um, or a Forerunner of the Coalition. I think the Forerunner is what I take in case we end up with some bomb pirate or something, which could happen. So right now we only have one other vampire, but even if there's just a five mana 4-4 four, four that draws me a card, that's a good card. So <laughs> we're okay with that. Okay, here I guess we'll take an Armasaur over an Aquatic Incursion. Um, Sworn Guardian. All these sad merfolk. Miscloaked Herald. I mean, I'm just not going to play Grasping Scoundrel in this deck, so why take it? Um, 
We're going to have two choices. One's going to be like a really synergistic merfolk deck, and the other is going to be like sheer power, <laughs> thanks to Tetsamok and Champion of Dusk. We still have the Immortal Sun. Oh, God. Vanquisher's Banner now, too? My God. <laughs> what do we do? It's like an embarrassment of riches, but, like, what's the right choice? Tetsamok is insanely powerful. Champion of Dusk, less so. But we have so many merfolk. And we have, we'll have, if we take Vanquisher's Banner, we have three different Anthem effects for them. Oh. <laughs> Man. So, like, just, just to look real quickly. Probably don't play Gleaming Barrier in this version of the deck. River Darter, Aquatic Incursion, Kamena's Awakening, Miscloaked Herald... Silver Gill Adept, Jade Bearer, Jade Bearer, Sworn Guardian. <laughs> uh, so we would take Contract Killing here if we thought we were going to take the path of Tetsamok. But I just feel like we're giving up so much once we have three way, three tribal ways of pumping basically our entire team. Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking the banner. <sighs> that was a hard decision. And I would not fault anyone for being like, can't believe you didn't play Tetsamok. I wouldn't fault my... I, I, I could never have imagined a situation where I wouldn't play Tetsamok. But the way things have gone, Merfolk is where we needed to be. We'll take Tashana's Wayfinder. Deep Root Warrior, another Merfolk. So we don't have a merfolk here, but Stormfleet Aerialist is pretty good. Yeah, it's probably what we take. We could take Run Aground. We're not exactly heavy on ways to interact with our opponent at this point. But I think I'll take the Aerialist. Air Elemental. There's another Sailor of Means, but yeah, we'll take Air Elemental here. Not, oh, should we take Jade Guardian instead? Probably. If we're really wanting to push Merfolk here, we'll just take the Guardian, even though I do think the uh, other card might be better. So Jungle Delver and Headwater Sentries are both much better in a deck that has Mist Mist Merfolk, Mistbinder, Vanquisher's Banner, and the Immortal Sun. So I think I would probably take the lower drop, though. That makes the most sense. I don't want Storm Sculptor. Unblockable's nice, but... Here's a way to help us splash, but I splashing double black is just so hard. What a weird draft this was. Um, I guess I'd probably take the Raptors over Depths of Desire. Here we'll take a run aground. Shipwreck Looter, another Jungle Delver. Take another Jungle Delver, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the choices were super tribal merfolk deck with lots of merfolk. <laughs> or playing Tetsamok, basically, and cutting all the blue. It was a hard choice. I haven't gotten to play Tetsamok. I don't think. I've had it played against me. And we are, one thing we don't have much of is removal. But I think we'll be okay. I kind of wish we'd picked up more Merfolk payoffs in this last pack. We didn't don't actually have a ton of them, but Vanquisher's Banner is a big enough one on its own. And that, you know, we also have the Lord. We also have, um, we're probably not playing Sworn Guardian, by the way. We have... Plenty of merfolk without it. May also be true of aquatic incursion. Probably is. Even though it's good with path and immortal sun. Well, it's kind of like I have two lords. Maybe then you do want aquatic incursion. It's kind of like I have three lords. Excuse me. Yeah. Maybe we just want to cut like the jungle delvers. And call this the deck. So the jade bearers are annoying because on turn one they're so bad.
I'm not a huge river darter fan, but I think it's probably okay. Yeah, all in merfolk, basically. Sorry, Tetsamok. Like, so we can look real quick at what the other deck would have looked like. It wouldn't run this or any of this stuff. Just to see, like... And it wouldn't run Jade Bearer, wouldn't run Merfolk Mistbinder. It would just run, like, strong black cards at the top. Jungle, yeah. In the end, we would also have to run like a few of these random things to make to get to the right number of playables since we decided to commit to Merfolk in the last pack. But I do think in the end, we've done the right thing. I think. Yeah, so put this stuff back in there. Not the Sworn Guardian. What the hell else did I take out? Oh, the Jade Bearers. Something else is missing. There it is. Vanquisher's Banner. Um, yeah. Seems like a good deck. Seems like we got all the merfolk nonsense we could want. Coupled with two very powerful artifacts. And a powerful enchantment. So, uh, we need to add lands... Normally I wouldn't run Aquatic Incursion, but when we have so many ways to pump the board, I think we want to. Um, eight, nine, ten, seven might be right. Yeah, I think eight, nine is probably better. Yeah. Okay. Did we make the right choice? I don't know. That draft was crazy. I'll see you guys in the first match. All right, match one. Here we are. I would like to play first. I think this is a solid hand. I mean, it doesn't have a two drops in it, but this is a keepable hand in this format. I mean, we're going to start with Jungleborn Pioneer. And while I'd like to be really greedy and play Path of Discovery <laughs> first, it's probably not slow enough for me to do that. Fire Shrine Keeper. Obviously, we're taking one from the Keeper. Okay. Well, we're going to play Jungleborn Pioneer here. Probably going to have the chance to take a breath and play Path of Discovery next turn. And then maybe also Vanquisher's Banner right after that. Um, depends how much pressure our opponent's putting on us, though. I just take Fire Shrine Keeper here. Yeah, we definitely can take a breath and play Path of Discovery here. Um, let's attack with both our creatures. And then next turn, we may just play Vanquisher's Banner. Um, and uh, name Merfolk. And then Jade Bearer will do... Bunch of stuff when it comes into play. <laughs> Put a counter somewhere, explore, draw me a card. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so I'm thankful that our opponent isn't uh, doesn't have their foot on the gas pedal. They don't have. They're stuck on two lands, so they're they're in a tough spot. But that allows us to do our shenanigans. No attacks this time. Lightning Strike on a Jungleborn Pioneer. That that can't feel good for our opponent. Okay, so we're going to go Vanquisher's Banner. And we're going to name Merfolk. He's a 2-2 now, and he can attack. Playing Jade Bear is going to be hilarious this next turn. <laughs> A one drop that draws me a card, explores, and puts a plus one plus one counter on something, and it's a two two. Don't forget that. It may be about to make me like discard a card, but luckily we have two random islands because they may play the uh nope, just a swaggering corsair. 
Okay, so we're gonna go Jade Bearer, draws us a card. Another Merfolk, no surprise there. Comes into play, puts a counter on the Hexproof guy. Explores, yeah, I think we leave this on top because we're gonna draw it. Um, I think we attack with the Hexproof token. We know we have at least two more creatures coming this turn and maybe more. So if we can just trade a Hexproof token for a Swaggering Corsair, uh, we're cool with that. Yeah. All right, and then we're gonna go River Darter, draws us a card. This is absurd, but I love it. <laughs> Blue green, value town. Uh, then we're gonna play Miss Cloak Herald. Why aren't you a merfolk, man? What are you doing in this deck? You are, and we'll put you on top. And we'll end our turn. <laughs> Naturalize is very good against our deck. Yeah, our opponent is fucking what just happened there. And we don't even have, yeah, opponent scoops. We don't even, he didn't even have the third thing we could have had. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. We could just lose the rest now and I would feel pretty great. So I don't really think we change anything. Um, sideboard into a Tetsamok deck. Is Sworn Guardian... I mean, it's better at blocking those 1-1 one, one menaces, but it still needs something to block with it. So I don't really think we change anything. All right. Ooh. This time around, we get our Lord. No Keeper of the Shrine or whatever for them. Um, I think we probably play Deep Root Warrior first, because then it can attack, and when it gets blocked, it'll turn all the way into a 4-4. After I play Merfolk Mistbinder, anyway. So, Deep Root Warrior. Lightning Strike to the face. Moment of Craving in the face. All right, well, we're risking another removal spell, but I say Merfolk Mistbinder time. Lannery Storm. Um, kind of just have to take it. I mean, I know they're gonna get another treasure. I know that it can do a lot of damage later. But I don't think it's worth trading our Merfolk Lord. Okay. Um, well. I think we attack with the Mistbinder and then play Jungleborn Pioneer. Can leave one blue up like we have dive down. But yeah, that 3-3 three, three and a 2-2. Two, two. The 2-2 two, two token can just block this and kill it now. It will give them one more treasure, which is certainly value. But um, it is tempting to keep the Hexproof token because we know we have so many ways to pump it, one of which we have in our hand. So we could think about Mistborn, uh, Jungleborn Pioneer being the blocker instead. But we also have another Hexproof card in our hand anyway. So... What's happening right now? I don't think it's gonna be good. <laughs> I 
That is not good, as expected. Okay, Vraska. Um, yeah, I do think we block. And I think we do it with our hexproof token. What do you have, Skullduggery? Sack your treasure? <laughs> That would be bad. It would work because it would make theirs a 4-3. They would give minus one, minus one to something else. I don't... Oh, they're killing the Lord. Ow, that is savage. Wow. <laughs> well, they just blew us out pretty hard right there. Wow. That's really all I can say about that is wow. Okay, so we're going to attack Vraska. Beating Vraska is not going to be easy. And then what do we do? Hexproof Jade Guardian. Or Stormfleet Airless. I think we go with the Jade Guardian. Put the counter on itself. Here comes a pirate. I think we just take three here. If they want to do three, they may only do two. They only do two. Needle tooth raptor, my God, this is bad. <laughs> oh no. Okay, that could help us. Um, God. Well, Hexproof is good news here because you can't target my Jade Guardian with your Needletooth Raptor. Jungleborn Pioneer, I mean. So we're going to attack Vraska Relic Seeker. Pirate blocks it, sure. Um, but then we can go Stormfleet Aerialist. And then Kumena's Awakening. They won't draw their extra card until my turn. And so they're going to get one extra, probably. Vraska. Savage. She's, she is so good. Yeah, okay. Uh... We have to play two permanents on our turn to get to the city's blessing now. Target player's life total becomes one. Yeah, we're dead, basically. Because um, I don't see how we can punch through Vras to hit Vraska right now. We're just going to take this. We do get to draw an extra card that could help us. Doesn't really. Um, yeah, so we lose this one to Vraska. Okay, we've seen more of their deck. Um, I think we bring in Negate now that we know they have Vraska. Probably not two of them though. And we can cut like a Jade Craft Artisan. Maybe I'd rather keep the Artisan and cut the Incursion. Yeah. Yeah. That Reckless Rage is what really, well, wrecked us. 
No combo required for Planeswalkers. True enough. I would like to play first. This is a keeper. It's a little shaky, but I think it's a keeper. I'm not gonna bother playing Jade Bearer on turn one. I'm hoping the Raptors can help us find some more mana, but we do need a third land to even do that. Okay, we do have the third land. So when our opponent's sitting on Vraska mana, we need to have Negate up, basically. Be thinking about the problems that it can create for us. Okay, so... Yeah, Skullduggery will just result in a two-for-one for them. So I think we just attack and then play Ranging Raptors. One of the few non-merfolk in our deck. Might be the only one. If we can just kill them before they get to Vraska mana, that's cool too. Okay. And, um... I think, yeah, we play Jadecraft Artisans here. Pump Ranging Raptors and then attack with both. Because this pumps itself to a 3-3 when it gets blocked, so it'll be a trade. It may just take six. Just take six. Okay, well, not a bad trade for us. So the question is, do we like Jade Bearer and put the counter on Miscloaked Herald, or do we put it on our Artisan? I think that answers our question. <laughs> we need the creature who can just get around all of this um, to be the one that has the counter. So we'll play Miscloaked Herald, and we'll play Jade Bearer. Put the counter on Miss Cloaked Herald and we'll end our turn. We have Negate up. I mean, we could use it on a removal spell. We would love to get to our sixth land and really start rolling. He didn't see this in game one when we assembled our Vanquisher's Banner plus... Did he see this? No, it was Path of Discovery Vanquisher's Banner. Do we use negate here? I think we do. It's gonna suck if they play Vraska later, admittedly. Okay. Attack for two. They're one away from playing Vraska. All right, Bombard works. You got me. Okay. Well, I think we play the Immortal Sun here and just attack with everything. Our opponent can blow up our board, but we're going to draw extra cards on our next turn, and that will hopefully correct things for, for us to some extent. If we draw two lands, not so much, but... Yeah, so block there, kill one of these. We will keep one creature, actually. Okay. 
wonder if they have another lightning strike and they're just going to kill our whole board. They may have Shatter and they may have sighted it in for Vanquisher's Banner and if they can use it to blow up the Immortal Sun, we're not going to be very happy. Really? I'm a little puzzled by this. I guess we're about to see what happens. <laughs> Something's going to happen. Buccaneers bravado. Okay. That still seems like it a strange decision. I guess they still kill one of these. Probably, yeah. This way they just let me keep the 2-2. Two -two. Getting a land out of our deck decreases the chances that we draw another one here. Yeah, so they'll kill that. We keep our 2-2. Two -two. Oh, yeah, we do get to do this twice. <laughs> get to thin out our deck a little more because of the first strike damage. Um, all right. Mortal Sun, take over, please. Freebooter. Okay. So they could have Raska. And Raska, I think, can she blow up freaking artifacts? She might be able to. Oh, God. Nebraska. John Gborn Pioneers, good. Okay, that is all good. Um, so we're going to go Pioneer. And Awakening. And we have the City's Blessing. So now we're going to draw three extra cards every turn. Vrasco or not... <laughs> Feel like probably we can overpower that. Yeah, we're gonna have to find out. <laughs> can tell you that much. Destroy target. Yeah, she can destroy artifact creatures or enchantments. God. Maybe not. Maybe not. Why do you say? Oh, did he just realize he can blow up artifacts and enchantments? Oh my. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Frasca is better than all of our crazy powerful cards are. Oh, by the city's blessing. I mean, by the immortal sun, he can't use its abilities. That's what he's saying oh my about. Oh my God, it turns off Frasca. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yeah, we definitely win now, you guys. <laughs> Unless they have Shatter. I mean, we're drawing three cards a turn. All our creatures are bigger. All our spells are cheaper. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, man. So, give me an extra card. Give me another card. Let's just get Vanquisher's Banner out there, too, for good measure, you know? Um. Okay. Well, Jungleborn Pioneer is going to attack them. We don't need to worry about Vraska. Your deck is insane, by the way. I know! If only you knew, I also drafted a freaking um, Tetsamok, and I'm not even playing him. It's, it is absolutely insane. So much fun, though. That that turn right there should be enough for the W. Wow. Unless they have Shatter. Shatter would shatter my soul, I have to say. Okay, Tomb Robber. Not Shatter. Discarding Impale. Yeah, Impale just it doesn't matter much right now, does it? I feel like they've got to be digging. There's a Teal and Ollie's Crown. I feel like they've got to be digging for Shatter. Man, the Immortal Sun. <laughs> Woo! 
That was spicy. See if we can, this deck feels like it should 3-0, right? Right? I guess we'll see. All right, match two, we would like to play first. It's a good hand. Miss Binder, bunch of merfolk. We, of course, would like to draw a few lands, but if we even only draw one, Ranging Raptors probably guarantees us to hit a fourth at some point. Wonder how he feels about all the merfolk he hangs out with. There are a lot of them. And this I don't normally think is playable, but when you have three ways of pumping all your merfolk, it's pretty good. <laughs> Since it makes two. Okay. So, Deep Root Warrior. Okay. Well, we will play our Mist Binder. Which may not live long against a black-red deck, but... All right, we get in for three. We do need that third land. Firebrand, okay. All right, in a world where Skullduggery exists, it's just not worth attacking with our Mistbinder. So I'm just going to attack with Deep Root Warrior and then play Jungleborn Pioneer. Yeah, I mean, we knew she might, she may not be long for this world, and we were right. Okay, um, well, I think we attack with both of these and then play Ranging Raptors. Really want to get that fourth land so I can Jadecraft Artisan, Aquatic Incursion, get closer to Immortal Sun, and so forth. Skullduggery. Yep. Opponent goes to 12. We're both stuck on three. We both seem to have pretty clunky hands, too. Okay. All right, that makes things a lot better. Um, I play Jadecraft Artisan, pump Deep Root Warrior, and then attack with both Ranging Raptors and Deep Root Warrior. I mean, they have, I was gonna say, if you, if you gotta take six, I don't think that's really what you wanna be doing. This means we get to search up a land, which gets us one closer to the Immortal Sun. Also, we get our double blue, which could matter. Um, and Wonder Turn, drops them to eight. They hit their fourth two as well. Fourth two as well. Redundant. All 
we draw a land, I don't think there's any question that we play the Immortal Sun. I mean, if we don't draw a land, yeah, okay, they scooped. They don't even get to know we have the Immortal Sun, which means they might not bring in Shatter. So that's <laughs> that's good news for us. Um, we may want to bring in, not you, Sworn Guardian. That has good stats against um, that one mana one one who can sack itself. I think I want to. I think I would want to see a little more of their deck first, though, just to make sure. Like, if that's their only X one, then it's not really worth bringing in. Granted, it'll be a two four a bunch of the time in this deck, but still. Okay, this is a good one. So in this hand, I may actually just play Jade Bear so I can get Stormfleet Aerialist online. Just play Jade Bear as a one mana one one. It's not what I want to be doing. But I think it's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so. Although if they play a two drop here, I guess it's Kind of a pain to do that. Well, maybe now we don't get to do it. I don't know. I, f I feel like we're just... Let's just throw her away. Maybe we can trick him into thinking that we have a trick. We did. <laughs> yeah. Got to get that city's blessing. down as a 2-3. Direfleet Captain is scary. Um, it can enable some very, very difficult to deal with attacks. Four under the Coalition. If they get a Direfleet Neckbreaker here, we're going to be a little concerned. <laughs> Let's say. Um, Daring Buccaneer. Okay. I mean, you know, that's a good card too, but Dire Fleet Neckbreaker was what I was really, really afraid of. Okay, so we're going to attack with Stormfleet Aerialist. And then we're going to play Jungleborn Pioneer. We know they drew a Daring Buccaneer, but what else do they have? They also have a Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. That's a good one to know they have. <laughs> okay, so those guys are both attacking, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Could have a trick easily, but... Um... I think we try to take down the yeah they've got a trick yep all right Go to 16 ranging raptors isn't bad right here because it helps me get the other blue for kumena's awakening in addition to being a good blocker i think we just in the turn so remember that they have a Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. They're just going to play a Rummaging Goblin there. Works for me. Okay. Um, I'm going to play Tashana's Wayfinder here. Um, yeah. I mean, it gives us a source of damage. Yeah, we'll put it on top. And we'll end our turn. We could attack with the Raptors and really try to get the double blue that we really want, but... Maybe next turn I will. The Wayfinder will probably attack. Double Dire Fleet Captain. That's what you want to see. Okay, we go down to 15...
Okay. Um, I think we just go nuts here. Then I think we just end the turn. And we wait to draw, wait to pump our whole team. Obviously, we have the city's blessing, so eventually that'll matter. Okay, they discard their cutthroat. They're digging for lands is what they're doing. Um, they may have an impale for us now, but it doesn't do a lot on our board right now. That that does. That always does a lot. <laughs> so killing my flyer? Yeah. Deal. Flyer is dead. I'm going to bring... All right. Now we get to draw multiple cards a turn. Miss Cloaked Herald is going to attack. And hopefully in all the drawing we do, we can find some extra stuff. Some, some extra ways to pump the Miss Cloaked Herald. Golden Demise might be what they're digging for. The more, because I, I keep trying to just think, like, they're digging so hard, like, they must be looking for something. And that's worth keeping in mind, that they may have Golden Demise. Oh, I probably should have played this and pumped the Herald. This is a good, good. Uh, you know, it's embarrassing to reveal that I have the Jade Guardian and then I didn't play it on my Herald because I didn't get in for the damage, but it's better than just not doing it at all. <laughs> so I could put the counter here so it doesn't die to Golden Demise, but we'll put it here. And that's, you know, I make misplays all the time and yeah, it's like, man, do I look stupid to my opponent right now? But if I just decided not to do it just because I'm worried my opponent thinks I look stupid, that's even that makes me even stupider. They just won't know it. So <laughs> that's sort of how I look at it. Yeah, I think they're going to attack us finally. Nope. Yeah, without Trample, I mean, we can stop their board pretty effectively. There we go. Um, yeah, so we'll play Merfolk Mistbinder. And now, should I attack with something else? I'm gonna hold on to this Aquatic Incursion for insurance if my opponent is digging for Golden Demise, by the way. Um, Let's just attack with the, the yeah. Let's just attack with the miscloak Carol. There's too much that could go wrong <laughs> in other scenarios. So if I play Aquatic Incursion, I can actually attack with two unblockable creatures. And next turn, I think that probably is what I'll do because then I'll be presenting lethal uh, the next turn. So. God, Golden Demise would be backbreaking. Vampire Revenant, less so. But Golden Demise, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't kill all of our guys, but they'd keep their whole board and they'd be able to attack us. So it would just be like, great. <laughs> so, um, let's draw our two cards. Hmm. Path of Discovery, huh? So this is going to be good because we can go Jadecraft Artisan, pump this. Does mean we can't play Aquatic Incursion this turn. Attack for five. Their creatures are all just so small. I should really just be attacking with... 
I can even attack with Jade Bearer. Five, seven, nine. Yeah, we'll leave the rest of the guys back. All right, they take, they go to five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I draw one more land, I can play Aquatic Incursion and make a creature unblockable in the same turn. God, we've both drawn a lot of cards. They've actually drawn more than I have, thanks to their rummaging. So if they have Golden Demise, I think we bring in Negate again. Okay. Um... I think we'd pr try to just play Aquatic Incursion here and win the game. Give our one of our Hexproof guys unblockable. Yep. All right, 2-0 now. Deck is crushing people. Let's see if we can keep it up. All right, we're going to our last match, looking to try to get a trophy. Um, I think this hand's a keep, even though, you know... Turn two Stormfleet Aerialist doesn't feel great when you're not giving it um, the plus one plus one counter, but oh yeah, we have him too. We have one pirate, one dinosaur, and like seventeen merfolk, don't we? Yeah, we're we're just gonna play him. Um. I think we play River Darter. Not being able to be blocked by dinosaurs seems relevant against Red Green. In most cases, I'd play Jungleborn Pioneer on turn three, but if there were more pressure on me, that's definitely what I would have done. Um, but as things sit, okay. And we've got Vanquisher's Banner coming down soon, so we'll attack with both of these. And we will play Jungle Born Pioneer. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to play Vanquisher's Banner and I'm going to name Merfolk. And I'll attack with all of those. I don't know. It would be interesting to see other dra paths of a draft where it's right not to play Tetsamok. I think in the end, this was one of them. Um, but it's very weird to have ended up at that place. So Tender Shoe Dryad's a serious problem. We have to find a way to kill our opponent very quickly. Um, and I, we can do it. Drawing a land right there is not going to help us do it, though. Uh, <laughs> we can do it, but... The sapperlings are going to become a problem very quickly. Drop them to 10. And our deck does not have a lot in the way of removal. So far, we've just sort of been overpowering people um, with our, our swarming people, you know. And he's going to have two sapperlings by our turn who can block. So they don't have the city's blessing, and they probably won't for a while because they're going to have to keep throwing sapperlings in front of my guys. But, uh, yeah. Do we have a single removal spell? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Make that Dryad bigger? No, make the Sapperling bigger. So it can trade for a token. Makes sense. Because you don't want to block with the Dryad at all, so... 
All right. Oh, we do have that. We do have that, don't we? Hmm. That can actually set up some some shenanigans here. Uh, okay, we're gonna attack everything. Yep, that'll, yep. Oh, this is gonna be so good. <laughs> See ya, goodbye to both your sapperlings and you take four, you do kill my one token though. And you go down to six. You have to recast your Tender Shoe Dryad. <laughs> that was really good. That was really lucky. Like our only card that could result in something that powerful happening is what we got. All right, they're going to go to five. And Tender Shoot's back. Crap. <laughs> we do not want to be drawing all these lands. It's not the time for lands. So you go to one, which means you're dead to my flyer. Let's see what you got. One of these days, I'm going to draw another creature, too. If we can't kill you with the aerialist here, and we can't. Okay, things aren't looking great now. Um, we do have our unblockables. We really don't need to hit another land here. Okay, okay. So let's try to chain some creatures together here. Can we do it? Okay. We're doing it. We'll make this the bigger creature. Train some more creatures together. Come on. You are not the right creature type, but if but I'll take you. Opponent has to be pretty conservative. Um but, you know, they are also making Sapperling tokens every upkeep, including theirs. We have unblockables. We don't have anything with flying. We just have one unblockable creature to try to get in one damage someday. Okay. Not what we wanted. Well, we may get, we may lose this first game to Tender Shoot Dryad's Might. When it's stabilized at one, it's brutal. Shouldn't be allowed. Double Dusk Charger. All right, I'll draw some more cards, I guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Like, the more we draw, the sooner we can get to our unblockable creature is the only thing, but they're just making so many saplings. <laughs> it's not good. And they just impaled my biggest creature so they can send everybody in. Not everybody, but some guys in. So we'll block that. And we'll block that and we'll take six. <sighs> kind of doubt it's enough, but... Oh, if we draw our uh, aquatic aquatic incursion, that would do it, wouldn't it? Damn it. <laughs> we drew our miscloaked arrow. Oh, do we survive for another turn? We do. We should play it because we still get to draw a card and try to see if we can hit aquatic incursion. There's no way for us to survive another turn the way things stand. So we'll play miscloaked herald, draw a card. Play Merfolk Mistbinder. Draw a card. 
I think we're running out of mana now is our problem. We'll play, yeah, now we don't have the mana to play it and use its ability. Maybe I should have played the, no, that wouldn't have worked. We'll play that, draw a card. Okay, thing is though, if we chain enough of these together, we might actually have enough blockers to survive. Play Jadecraft Artisan. Doesn't really matter what I pump, but. We are out of gas now. So we can take 11 damage. These alone, there's eight of them, are 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're dead. <laughs> well, let's see. We block, let's say we block Dusk Charger and Dusk Charger. Take six. We block Dust Charger, Dust Charger, take uh, six from Colossal Dreadmaw. This is gonna be attacking two in this situation though. Um, and then that leaves us with five creatures to block these guys, which is nine. So yeah, we're dead. Man, opponent, opponent stabilized at the right time. Their deck is sweet, 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 sweet. Okay, what do we do against that? <laughs> do we want like a grindy kind of jungle delivery kind of thing? Do we want another unblockable creature for when they manage to lock down the board like that? I don't know if we do. It's just such a mediocre one. I think we just gotta, we just gotta We gotta draw our Miss Herald to turn earlier. That's what we gotta do. Because we can control that, right? But like I was saying, like, how many courses can a draft take where it's right not to play your Tetsamok? And I think this was it. I think this is a more powerful deck than the black green one would have been. That one, sure, if we draw Tetsamok every game, we win. But this deck has so many different ways it can win. Uh, it just can swarm the opponent. I mean, that's the main way it wins, but it has all of these other supporting cards that make swarming the opponent so good. It's a keeper. Kind of wish I had had, had Miss Cloaked Herald in my opening hand, you know? But what are you going to do? We got to get a trophy, right? I mean, this deck's too silly to not get a trophy. Do we play Kamena's Awakening right away? Jungle Creeper. Hmm. That's annoying. We are going to attack. He could double block and kill it. Seems unlikely. Oh, he is. Okay. It's going to be a while before you can get him back from your graveyard. Four, five, six, seven. Oath Sworn. Comes into play tapped. You don't though, you jerk. Um Okay. We're gonna attack with all those. They'll get their treasure. Um Three, four, five, six, seven. This will be eight. So I'll, they're going to draw one card off of it. But after that, I should be able to get the city's blessing. Our opponent's deck is also ridiculous, especially if they play Tender Shoot Dried right now. 
I'm going to be a very sad person. That's good news. There's no tender shoots. Um, all right. So we go. There's our city's blessing. Um, we definitely attack with the pioneer. And I think I play the Stalker because it's so hard for my opponent to block right now. Yeah, they're going to get their Jungle Creeper back. Who can block the Stalker, but dies in the process. Okay, Impale. And then they probably play the Stalker with their remaining mana. Wow. Naturalize. So good against us. And the right thing for our opponent to do there for sure. Okay, so we're going to cast. Reveal a Merfolk. Nice. That's going to be that's gonna be good. Um... We're just going to attack with our unblockable dude. Drop them to nine. And I think we play Path of Discovery. Because how many awesome enchantments can inner deck have? Naturalize number two. No, I don't know. That would be bad. Sword Tooth. That's pretty bad. That just killed everything except Jungleborn Pioneer. Hmm. We're going to take the two. You're suddenly not as good as... You would have been so good a turn ago. I don't have time to play Vanquisher's Banner. So... Shauna's Wayfinder is just going to get to explore twice. I think I put you into my graveyard. Well, guys, I think we're going to end short of a trophy here. Opponent's sweet, like, three-color deck is formidable. I'm going to take five. They're giving us a little bit of time, which I'm pretty thankful for. Um, you know, yeah. Vanquisher's Banner. Um, Merfolk. I'm going to attack with the 3 3 so that I can play Stormfleet Aerialist as well. And if I can make him get back Jungle Creeper, you know, there are worse things. You also get to explore. Get another land. So many impales. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take this. Please let me hit a creature, especially a merfolk. <sighs> oh! <laughs> okay. We're not quite dead, but we're we're very close. We have to chain some things together. Um, blocking Jungle Creeper, going to three. <sighs> we do get to explore a couple times, but we're not gonna get to draw the cards. Our deck was awesome. It had some of my... It was probably the most fun I've had in this format so far. But we finished just short of a 3-0. And I don't even know if it was that short. Did we even win a game? I don't think we won a game. Did we? I don't think we did. So, but, you know, it was close. We got them to 1 in game 1, so... But that's okay. Their deck was really good, too. 
uh, two and one was good. It was a super fun deck. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more draft videos. Don't forget to like this one if you enjoyed it and share it too so others can enjoy it as well.